Normally, this is the shot where I'm holding something. However, the subject of today is just too big. Today we're going to talk about whales. This is Naturalis Newsroom. Naturalis is a collection of more than 300 whales and dolphins. And today we're going to talk about a whale of a job. A project which has never been done before on this scale. The cleaning of our collection. Today introducing collection curator Becky Desjardins. Hi. Hello. So why do we store whales? Whales are part of the Naturalis collection, which is a biodiversity library of all life through time. And researchers come and use the collection as a library for different research projects. Where do our whales come from? Our whales come from all over, but mostly from the North Sea. They strand on the beaches here, and then the Naturalis team is sent out to go and get them. Before you can add them to the collection, you have to clean them. How do you clean a whale? So what happens is a whale washes up on the beach and we basically take off as much meat as we can, including the organs and everything. It's a really smelly, big job. Then the bones come back to Naturalis and we macerate them. That means we put them in a big bath of 38 degree water and they sit in the bathtub for a few months and all the rest of the meat sort of melts off. We basically make whale soup. <laughs> so how does the soup smell? <laughs> Horrible. The whole process, from the beach to the maceration tank, it's really, it really smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then it's clean. Is it then clean forever? Not really. So that's the tricky thing about whale bones. They come out of the bath clean, they usually get bleached, and then they're put into the collection. And they're a little too big to fit into a box like a shell or like a small bird would. And so they're exposed to the air and the dust and the light. So they're not really clean for forever. But the difference between whale bones and other vertebrate bones is that whale bones are quite porous. They have really teeny holes all through them. And these holes are filled with fat. So whales carry 50% of their fat as blubber under the skin and the other 50% in their bones. It helps with their diving. So when we clean them when they first come off the beach, the goal is to really try and get out as much grease during the maceration process as we can. What happens is over the years, if there's still grease on the inside of these bones, it can slowly leach its way out onto the surface of the bones. So how do you clean them the second time? To clean that, we actually use an ammonia solution and a toothbrush. So you put a little ammonia on, toothbrush, and your the ammonia mixes with the fat and it makes soap, basically. And we just take the soap off and then it's clean. We also use a vacuum cleaner and we have a um, sandblaster as well. What makes it so special to clean whale bones? So whale bones, it's, it's really neat because I feel like every individual is different. So you can see a lot of funny things in the bones, maybe a broken bone that healed naturally or a really old animal with worn down teeth or a really young one and the skeleton's really small. It's sort of, each one is, is a different story and, and really interesting. Does every part of the collection needs to be cleaned? Well, not everything. A lot of things can stay safely in drawers, but there are some big things like the whale. So last year I worked on a project where I vacuumed 1100 animals with hooves, so bison, deer, antelopes, giraffes, you name it, I vacuumed it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just that you like cleaning? I really don't like cleaning. You should see my house, it's such a mess. <laughs> Do you want to hear more about our whale cleaning project? Becky writes these awesome blogs about it. You'll find a link below the video.